friends, thank you for joining me today. My name is Mr. Carl, and I'm going to be reading to you this really, really special book called Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. But before we start, I would like to ask y'all a question. Do you think that kids can change the world? I want you to think about that. Can kids change the world? How can kids change the world? Now, think about these questions when we're reading this book. Maybe your answers will change by the end. Now, remember, Mr. Carl has a little trouble opening books, so I'm gonna need your help. Three, two, one, everyone go whoosh, okay? Three, two, one, whoosh! Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. Can anyone see what the squirrel's holding up? It says, Sofia for president. Sofia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she turned one. What is Sofia doing right now? Is she helping watering the plant? She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around the Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. Now, that's a word that you may not know, Abuelo. That word is Spanish for grandfather. So now we can see this and we can see them helping out people who are stuck at home alone. Raking the leaves, taking pets for a walk, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk, Sofia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sofia liked better. Now we're gonna stop right there because I like that. Most people liked good, but Sofia liked better. I find that really interesting because even though Sophia around her sees that her neighborhood is good, she and her abuelo look for ways to make their neighborhood even better. I just really like that quote. Show you the picture again. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass, making plans, munching cookies. Abuelo and girl, well, except for that Tuesday when Pup saw the squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town, over, under, beneath, and around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the hollering man and the blowing Pup. So as you can see, this book is going many different directions. Up the squirrel ran to the top of a hill, made a leftover junk for a local landfill. They reached the tip top of the mountain of trash, which jiggled and broke with an ear splitting crash. There is a mountain of trash. Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud on a moldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ouch! cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. So what happened to Abuelo? Because of the trash mountain, he accidentally hurt his leg. The next day, Sofia walked to school solo, alone, but it wasn't the same without her abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sofia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea.
The very next morning at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled and Pup gave a bark. So what does the sign say? Can we see that? Get rid of Mount Trash more. Let's build a new park. Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play, meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond, and a kiosk for cheese. She drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. So you see, everyone is wanting to help Sophia at the moment. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then bam, she woke up with a, when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone. But how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as night thunder growled and she lay wide awake. Then dawn bought a storm and a gloomy sky wept and her heart-sick Sophia finally slept. So as we can tell, everyone thought that Sophia could do this alone, which even though it's not impossible to get things done alone, one of the biggest steps to make something easier and more fun, more effective, is when you get to have a team together. Abuelo, her grandfather, baked cookies when Sophie got up. He gave her a bag full and sneaked one to Pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered. Te amo, mi vida. Te amo, mi vida. Do we know what that means? Te amo, mi vida. That means, I love you, my life. Because to Abuelo, Sophia is the, their whole life. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. And right here we have a really pretty picture of City Hall. Now, something I really enjoy about this book, we're gonna take a break here for just a second, is I want you to look at some other pictures here. There is so much activity going on in each picture. Whether it be people falling off of Mount Trashmore, Sophia and Abuelo breaking up leaves and helping people, and then, we get to this picture. Is anything happening? No, Sophia's just standing there alone, ready to face whatever's inside City Hall. The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department for Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the Office of Duck Ponds and Cool Things to Do to the Office of Monkeys, the Department of Cheese, the Division of Fountains and Meetings and Bees. Then down the basement, so musty and cramped, where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only a kid. You are only a kid. Hmm. Now, do we think that's going to discourage Sophia? Let's find out. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was over before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I, I think that the law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? Sophia said, one, if you were me 
and I was you, and he was your grandpa, what would you do? Well, I, well, said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought. Then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. Now, can so is Sophia old enough to vote? No, unfortunately she's not. Is she old enough to run for office? No, she's not. Is she old enough to talk to people? Yeah. Is she old enough to put ideas in people's heads? Yes. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arm brushed the edge of her, the old cookie sack. And it was at that moment when Sophia first knew being brave means doing the thing you must do, though your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. She once got rolling, she had lots to say, about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play, and other ideas for things they could do to help the town elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two and... So as you can see, we have so many ideas happening right now. Some of my favorites up here. I love cheese, a kiosk for cheese, cheese for everyone, a zoo library, loan a llama. I love cheese, maybe a fountain of cheese, a basket for bees, rubber ducks and a rubber duck pond. All right, cried the mayor, go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and the clerk. So as you can see, we have a lot of signs right here saying, let's build a park, sign our petition and a park for everyone. This book is full of change makers and I love it. Wow. The others joined in, not all, but a few, like Miss Greer and the kids in grade two. This was all started by a second grader. Look how many signs we have. Let's see if I can find some of my favorite ones here. Give bees a chance. Scientists need parks. Architects for parks. Somewhere that's green. Sea sepuede. Do we know what sea sepuede means? Sea sepuede means yes, we can. The end. So I asked the question at the beginning that can kids change the world? And the answer is yes. So I wanna ask another question. This book is called Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. And I actually waited till the very end because I kind of fib to you. There is one more page in the book. And I wanted to wait for this moment right here because it's gonna follow with a very special question. There were hearings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and blue bigger digger. They all built that park, that's how it got done, with the hard work by and for everyone. But it began with a dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now every evening till long after dark, the towns come together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sofia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sofia, that real life go-getter helps Blue River Creek get better and better. 
So it was one girl who started this whole thing. Now, the reason why I wanted to wait to read that last page is because everyone here wants Sophia to be president. Now, I want you to think, what are some things that you, that you would want to do to help people if you were to become president? If you could write a letter to our president and ask for ways on how he can help people that you don't see being done right now, what would you say? Thank y'all so much for joining me today. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this book. I know it's one of my favorites and I hope to see y'all soon. Have a good day.